Here in Kentucky, we have a long and unapologetic history of butchering French words by just kind of looking at them and pronouncing them whatever way makes sense to us. If you visit us here in Kentucky, you're going to hear things like Lafayette, Notre Dame, and Lagrange. And that's exactly what I did when I was researching this recipe that includes orgeat. I looked at it, thought about what made sense, and didn't actually check the pronunciation. So enjoy my repeated butchering of this very fine French word. Welcome back to the Victorian Bar Room for our first installment of 2024. It is January, it's frozen outside, and we understand that there are people who observe a ritual known as Dry January. I don't think I know any of them personally, uh, but there are some people who have subscribed to this channel and actually really keep up with us who don't drink. Yeah. Uh, and we're very flattered by that. Uh, the people would actually uh, keep up with us and take interest in what we do, even though uh, they're not inclined to enjoy the finished product. So. We have been promising uh, for several years now, especially our friend Sarah Wagner over in Sweden, Sweden, um, that we would do a Victorian drink for her that does not include alcohol. Okay, uh, so this they actually a lot of times in the uh, in the mixology manuals they would have a section for temperance drinks. And now understand in the 19th century when you're talking about a temperance drink that generally also included beer and wine but my understanding is that those individuals who observe dry january they don't even do that okay so we're going to go totally alcohol free uh today in a mixed beverage so if you have some friends who are coming over uh, who maybe don't drink and you want to still include them in the whole kind of uh, mixology ritual. Uh, this is great for that. It's very delicious. Uh, I even used this one time for a gathering that I was doing uh, bartending for when there were some kids present. And so they actually still got to come up to the bar uh, and I would mix them up a drink and they really loved it and, and loved the whole experience. So this is a good one. This is Orgiat Lemonade from the original bartender's guide, Jerry Thomas from 1862. If you like what we're doing here, if you like the idea of Victorian mocktails, cocktails, this, that, please hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, it really does help us out. So let's get into the recipe for 1862 Orgiat Lemonade by Jerry Thomas. This is going to be made in a shaker or a, or a shaking glass or something like that. Of course, the first, the main ingredient here is the Orgiat syrup. And you have heard us talk about this company before it is called Libering Company. They are doing a great job with uh, old time cocktail syrups and their Orgiat syrup is some of the best. Um, I've heard a lot of guys have had a lot of trouble uh, getting a hold of, of something that was satisfactory. Theirs is delicious. Uh, it is uh, an almond syrup uh, and it can be used both in alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. So we use an ounce of that in this. Remember an ounce is just two tablespoons. It was really cute when you were serving this to the kids, too. <laughs> they loved it. Yeah, I will note that was a private event, so there was no issues with who's serving what. Yeah. But, you know, he really wanted to be sure that, like, it wasn't just the adults who got to come up and get something. So right. It was really sweet. We're going to do the juice of half a lemon. Now, if you're just squeezing a lemon into a shaker, I've got my half a lemon. It's a lot easier to do it if you cut it into quarters. So we are going to squeeze those in. And there's a lot of different variations on lemonades under temperance drinks in a lot of these manuals. This was one in particular that was really good, but raspberry lemonade, strawberry lemonade, stuff that we still have today. Yeah, and this incorporates a, a, a cocktail syrup that you might already have on your bar. Now here's the confusing part. Jerry Thomas, Jerry Thomas says to balance it with water. What does that mean? We did some trial and error and we found out that about two ounces or four tablespoons is the perfect amount of water to balance all this out. Drop some ice into the shaker and give it some good shakes until it's cold. Now here's a part where a little creativity was called for. It said to garnish with berries and seasons. The whole point of this is it's January and it's frozen outside. That's when people aren't drinking. So what might we have uh, fruit wise uh, to garnish it with in January in Kentucky? Uh, you probably heard I'm very into apples. And at this point in the year and well beyond, there would be certain varieties of apples that were stored uh, mm -hmm. and stored very well. And you can eat them all the way through until uh, almost the next year. And so we've got a couple of apple slices. We're just gonna play with that for our garnish. And what do you think? Oh, thank you. It looks beautiful. First of all, it's very creamy. It's got this lovely froth. So you've got all the experience of making a cocktail. Oh, 
Mm, that is so good. I love that. It's um, surprisingly does come off really creamy with the almond and the froth from being shaken. Mm -hmm. It's so good. And I think actually this is the first time we've done it with apples. It adds a very nice little little zest. But this is delicious. Um, drinkers, non-drinkers, kids, mm -hmm. adults. It's it's all the experience of making a mixed drink. Um, I'm go ahead, yeah. my love. I was surprised how much I liked it, actually. Yeah. 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 Now, mm -hmm. if you're getting outside of the Victorian what's in season, I would also say a maraschino cherry. Well, and there were obviously like preserved cherries then too. Sure, yeah. Well, and, and you can, that's the great thing about the, the way that they state garnishes in the Victorian period is we're so hung up on it's this, it's this garnish for this drink because right. we can get everything all year round. Uh, a lot of the times they're saying fruit and berries in season. So you can play with this however you want. Uh, don't feel like you got to stick to in season since you can go and get whatever you want. Uh, and of course, this will be great in summer too with the stuff that is. Um, yeah. That's in season then. That is actually really interesting mm -hmm. that like having more available stuff may have made us more rigid. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that people at this time were much like, just whatever you got, do yeah. it. So you still can uh, participate in a Victorian drinking experience if you like, e even if you don't consume alcohol. Mm -hmm. uh, this is only one example of yeah. many that they did. You can still have you, the experience of coming to the bar. Yeah. Um, you can include the kids if you're doing an yeah. event and they kind of want to feel like they're participating too. Uh, here's the other thing. We just let the word soft drink uh, roll off of our tongues without really thinking about it, yeah. I think. Um, if you're in a Victorian context, a soft drink is a drink that's not hard. It's a drink without alcohol. Yeah. And they had some of those too. Some of the brands are still around. Uh, like we picked up this 1896 uh, Pearson Brothers root beer. You don't even have to mix it up if you don't want to. Root beer is a perfectly period thing to have. I love a good root beer. Mm. And that one is good. Oh, yeah. That's really nice. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So you can find a number of these things, just do a little bit of research. Hopefully uh, the formula is something like uh, they had back then. Of course, there's all the stories about what exactly went into Coca-Cola in the Victorian period. So you're probably not going to get exactly that from Coke. Um, that would also defeat dry January. <laughs> right, yeah. Defeat the be. purpose. Yeah. Uh, but, but there's all these <laughs> options. Uh, and again, we just really appreciate... Yeah. Non-drinkers, keeping up with us. Oh my gosh. Uh, keeping up with the channel. Uh, we hope that this gave you something that maybe you can try that is an authentic taste of the Victorian period that also goes along with how you're living today. Um, any final thoughts on that? Um, well, just a couple. I would say, first of all, if you are having any kind of party in January, if you um, weren't just, you know, socialized out in December, both of these are things you could add alcohol to. So if maybe you have drinkers and non-drinkers coming over, you could do a pitcher of this and have maybe some bourbon on the side. Um, back in my 20s, I did mix Jameson and root beer. Don't do not do that, actually. Jameson is so light because it's a mid-20th century. <laughs> don't do that ever of... again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I won't do you that You won't now. even know you're drinking. <laughs> but again, like if you are socializing in groups of people who some are doing dry January, some aren't, there, there's solutions out there. Um, and then the other thing we wanted to do was thank our donors from our Christmas special, yes. our supporters. Yeah, that was... That was our friend Heather Torrey. Yeah. And um, Catherine Stevenson. And Catherine Stevenson. So thank you both so much. That was great. We really appreciate the support. Um, yeah, it's just been great. We didn't know this journey was going to take us this far. Um, this might be all the mixology for dry January. We're looking forward <laughs> to a soaked February. <laughs> <laughs> This will probably be it for dry January. We're looking forward to a soaked February. Uh, and we've got some neat new uh, experiments that we're doing and hopefully some things to share with you. Maybe some new sites over the course of this year. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Here's to you. And whether you observe dry January or not, have fun and be safe out there.